our experience in deploying the DNSSEC in our registry. As you know, the DNS started as a plain protocol which has no security measurement. And all, as any protocol to face uh, major security issues like cache poisoning, spoofing, and man middle attacks. So like other uh, protocols, uh, the uh, security played main role to provide secure and safe platform for the DNS using the DNSSEC uh, protocol. Uh, most of registries have uh, the DNSSEC de uh, deploying in their checklist, and uh, we are one of them. Uh, we didn't deploy the DNSSEC from the start. We just become observer on the growth of the DNSSEC in terms of uh, other registries deploying and how mature the DNSSEC protocol. Uh, when I can uh, deploy the uh, deploy the DNSSEC and other major uh, registries, we started uh, seriously to deploy it in our uh, CCTLD. Before doing the deployment, uh, DNSSEC uh, protocol uh, needs to be understand well enough because uh, many registries faced uh, pro a simple problems which cost uh, cost them uh, losing uh, like half the zone or other major issues from simple stupid uh, issues so the main thing for us to d to do in, uh, in the deploying was to understand the dnssec in terms of protocol how does it work how the protocol support how other registries deployed uh, the DNSSEC, like a good example, Netherlands, and uh, formalizing from that knowledge into a roadmap for deploying the DNSSEC in the uh, registry. As you see, this is the roadmap for the deploying project in the registry. We are uh, actually in the final phase in the deployment. Basically, we divided the project in small part, uh, like the first initial phase was the theoretical part, like creating the team and uh, understanding the DNSSEC protocol, creating the DBS uh, draft. The DBS actually is the DNSSEC practice uh, uh, statement, which is a document that provides the policies and uh, procedures which the registry will use. It is a uh, public uh, document published in the site of the registry to give the, uh, its customers uh, an overview how the DNSSEC uh, will work. This is like an uh, agreement between the registry and the customer. <coughs> and uh, defining uh, the procedures, the technical procedures should be well defined to eliminate uh, human, simple human errors and have a systematic way in doing uh, things like key ceremony, key installation, and others, and uh, defining the DNSSEC setup for uh, signing the zone and publishing it, and providing the training and our awareness for our customers, building a test lab to evaluate that knowledge to be ready before the going uh, deployment, and the uh, DNSSEC deploying for all, both our uh, CCTLD, the IDNA version and the, the, the Latin version, and open it for the public. As I mentioned, uh, the DNSSEC uh, protocol is not that easy, and it needs to be understood well. Uh, it has uh, many RFCs uh, related to it. A good uh, documents related to it from other good example and registry like Netherlands, Switzerland, and others. Uh, technical uh, implementations documents and presentations from good people have done it from uh, different uh, conferences and meetings. Uh, we had a lot of meetings and brainstorming on how to safely deploy the DNS SIG with current system and to how adjust them to avoid uh, uh, failure, and uh, with each reading, with each knowledge, we evaluated and tested with our test labs. Uh, 
the DBS is follows uh, the RFC standard uh, 6841, which is uh, informational RFC related for how to write the uh, DNS sec practice statement, uh, with, uh, which is a statement that provides all policies and procedure in how deploying the DNS sec in the registry. We had uh, both versions, the Latin, uh, which is the English version, and uh, we translated in the Arabic, which is which will be published and which will help other regi Arabic registry in using it as template. We had defined it all our procedures into technical documents which can be followed and can be systematic done without uh, using a human hinge and uh, avoiding human errors and so on. Uh, like a key generation ceremony, how to generate the keys, how key installation, how uh, to use the emergency keys, how to install new safe in case of losing it, and how to transfer the keys and so on. Uh, we have we have defined the, our new DNS six setup uh, network with providing the uh, new part related to uh, signing the zone, like in a new system we had uh, the stealth signer, which is a new machine that signs the zone and push it in one way into the hidden master, and the hidden master will push it in the all uh, name servers, uh, our masters and slaves. Also we explicitly defined it, uh, each role in the system uh, there, there are multiple roles in the DNSSEC, like acting manager, DNSSEC specialist, and uh, system uh, admin. We defined it explicit uh, the roles between them, and we avoid the role overlap between the roles, so we don't end up with having like one role that can control more than one task. So we don't put all eggs in one basket and be in the security issue. Uh, the main thing about uh, DNSSEC is how to have uh, key management risk. There are multiple risks that might face uh, the registry in deploying the DNSSEC, like what will happen if the key got compromised or the safe got lost and so on. So basically we defined it, uh, each procedure related that ris uh, risk and we listed all possible risk that we had it after multiple brainstorms, brainstorms and meetings. Uh, for key setting, uh, like most of the registries, we, uh, we used the uh, concept of having key, key signing key and zone signing key. Uh, the different idea between key signing, we, the key signing key will sign just the set of keys, which is the this key and KSK. Uh, the DNS usually start uh, anyone who tr try to access any site will uh, any initially start from the root asking uh, the query like the IP address for google.com uh, then it will go down till the leaf in the domain uh, tree uh, the, the idea behind the DNS sec that it will provide a signature with each answer in the domain uh, querying. Uh, the, the resource record will be signed using the zone signing key. We didn't use uh, complicated key settings. We basically followed as the root and other registry uh, settings like using RSA and SHA2. Uh, we had a rollover for the KSK every one year. The key size for both KSK and ZSK is uh, 2K and the key, key, key rollover algorithm used in the KSK is double signature as recommended from multiple RFCs. For uh, the ZSK, we used the pre-publish as the mechanism for key rollover. Uh, before going, uh, before deploying the DNS sec, we had that uh, installing a test lab that mimic the actual production environment. We had uh, installing the virtual setup, which is identical to the DNSSEC. We had hands-on on that test lab to evaluate our 
uh, theoretical bar related with the procedures and uh, so on. We had uh, selections of hardware and software related to DNSSEC that meet our needs. We validate our uh, cases like key generation, signing, key rollover, key losing, em emergency key rollover. Uh, challenges related with DNSSEC there are so many documents related to the DNS that many RFCs, RFIs, and uh, best practices documents, guidelines, and limitations, and so on. Uh, s before, uh, it's not easy to understand if, unless you observe all these documents. There are so many t techniques and uh, algorithms you need to understand, like key rollover, algorithm rollover, and so on. Uh, there are so many parameters related to the R standard and uh, some uh, pro uh, solutions like uh, in, uh, signature inception, expression, jitters, and minmax, TPLs, and so on. DNSSEC is easy to create if it's not installed properly or not monitored properly. So uh, many registries has lost their uh, zones because symbol uh, simple human errors like not forgetting removing the keys and so on which got loading the zone file with not used keys and so on what next for us we are about to deploy DNSSEC on our .cd IDNA label uh, like in a couple of months the .cd will be DNSSEC signed We'll keep monitoring, which is the main uh, main thing should be done with DNSSEC. We shouldn't rely on hum human factor. And uh, after that, we are, all, we are going to allow closed access for the Dutch We will invite certain clients and customers, and we will see their behavior and how accepting the DNSSEC. We'll keep monitoring. It is the main thing should be done with the DNSSEC. Once we see ourselves that we are ready to deploy it in .sa, because .sa has a big pro pro proportion of domain name, not like the IDNA, we'll, we are going to enable DNSSEC on it, and we'll keep monitoring, and we will open it for the public once you are, we feel that we are able and capable of handling the, the uncertainty behind the, the DNSSEC. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Abdurrahman. Uh, are there any questions? I see a question over there. Just make sure the microphone is on. Testing. Right. Uh, hi, this is Rick Lamb uh, from ICANN. First of all, thank you very much for sharing your experiences here and also sharing them in the class as well. Your, your expertise is, is, is uh, very helpful here. And I really think this is the only way that we can uh, crack the nut of, of the difficulty of deploying DNSSEC is with such presentations like this. Um, the one question I have is, uh, do you have an approximate time frame for when we might see this, this first uh, signing? Uh, for the IDNA CCTLD, let's hope that it will be in a couple months from now. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Any more questions? Okay. Yeah. There we go. Go ahead. Hi there. My name is Nishal. I'm from Packet Clearing House. I'm curious about the uh, community. You, you've displayed a lot about what you're doing, and, and thank you. That was a really interesting presentation. I'm curious about the community uptake here. Um, are your, is your community coming to ask you, you know, this is what we'd like to see? Uh, of course, you should continue to do DNSSEC regardless of whether they're asking you or not. That's not there. I'm just curious what the, uh, the community feel is inside Saudi Arabia. I've never been there, so that's my interest. Um, and, and a follow-up question from that would be, um, what measure of engagement have you done with the community that you could perhaps uh, explain to uh, other people that are following that path, uh, things that did it did not work for you, and trying to explain the need for DNSSEC to uh, people that should be, you know, otherwise uh, interested in it? 
by community, you, you're referring to the local community, right? Okay, yeah. Uh, for the local community, we provided a workshop with the help of the RIVE, like six months ago, and something around that. And we had invited uh, certain customers for that workshop, and we, we did publicly announce it, and we had a, a remote participation for that uh, training. Uh, we also have, uh, like, uh, we, we receive uh, uh, questions from big providers regarding to DMSSEC and how to do deploy it, and we give them uh, certain guidance and like what to do and what to not to do and so on. But as a local community, it's not that major. Uh, there are limited, uh, like uh, ISPs, some banks, and so on. But uh, as so, uh, individuals, we hadn't or received any queries from normal individuals regarding to DNSSEC, maybe academic, and so on. I hope I cleared your question. Any more questions? If not, then thank you very much, Abdul Rahman. Appreciate your thank time. You. Thank you. And this concludes the morning session. I'm just going to hand it over to Rafiq for a quick announcement. Uh, thank you. <coughs> uh, just uh, I want to thank uh, our uh, Cafe Break sponsor, France IX. Unfortunately, they couldn't uh, join us. But uh, today they are offering a fresh French croissant outside, so don't miss it. Thank you. See you in uh, 15 minutes. Thank you. Yeah, let's do it exactly. <coughs>